Hey everyone, just a quick video here. Um, my mum's friend has given me this netbook to repair. Um, there's nothing wrong with the hardware, as far as I know. Um, it's just a software problem. Uh, Windows won't start. It refuses to start. When you try and boot it, it's uh, Microsoft Windows XP. It will not boot um, because there's been a software change. So this needs to be repaired. Um, this is obviously a netbook, so there's no CD drive. As you can see, it's a very small little thing. Um, so what I'm in the process of doing is um, creating a bootable XP pen drive uh, for this machine. Um, I wish I knew how to turn this off. There we go, that looks like it. But anyway, um, it's quite a nice little netbook. Um, I'm hoping that my XP disc will work with it because it's um, one of these products, you know, it's by HP and they've got the specific HP operating system that they use. So hopefully the repair from my XP disc will work. Um, so it's a wait and see and find out. I'm about to make this bootable. Um, however, I can't find my XP disc yet. So as soon as I do, I'm going to uh, jump into Disk Utility and format my um, pen drive temporarily. And yeah, let's get this show on the road, I guess. So here's my old XP Pro disc that must have been burnt, wow, four years ago, five years ago. I think it was before Vista came out. Um, I think Vista was just on the horizon, so it must have been a while ago. There we go, we're just going to pop that in there and close her up. I've got the old license sticker for XP. Um, I've got a collection of those product key license stickers, um, so that comes in handy. If you see any old computers, probably the most valuable thing on it is uh, not the hardware, but the product key stickers. So what I'm going to do now is just back up everything from my pen drive and then make this guy bootable. So all my stuff is transferring over from my pen drive. I haven't got that much on there, as you can see. 1.35 gigs of stuff. It's just going into this folder. It'll all be going back on. Um, it's just general stuff, you know, this pen drive goes with me everywhere, so it, it actually does need to clear out, it's a bit of a bit of junk. Quite a lot of Word documents from school and stuff. But you can see the disc is mounted here. I'm just waiting for uh, my pen drive to be ready to use. Okay, so sorry about the shaky camera work, I'm holding it f with my left hand. I think uh, for my first time ever, but I'm just sick of doing the left-handed mouse stuff. So here's the pen driver, formatted it called XP, um, even though it'll reformat itself anyway while doing this, I just formatted it to make sure. So restore, we're gonna uh, take our source as the XP image on the disk, as you can see here, XP, and then the destination of course is going to be this pen drive. XP. Restore. Erase. Now it wants me to type in my password and everything should be good. Okay, so it's hours later everyone. It's quite late and I'm just going to test this out. Here's my pen drive. Um, I've just come back from work. That's why it's hours later. Um, it took quite a long time to do this drive. I'm not sure why. But as you can see in the boot menu of this netbook now, we have the USB drive showing up. Um, so let's try and boot from that and see what it, whoa, okay. So it's asking us, please select the operating system to start. Okay, so here's Windows XP booting from the flash drive. As you can see, Windows setup, it worked fine which is pretty good. I'm hoping I don't have to reinstall XP. Um, I hope to just use the repair thing. Sorry I'm talking quite quiet, it's late. But I just want to get this done. Such a little thing and... Yeah, I don't know what screen size this is. This could be, looking at it now, 11 inch, maybe 11 inch is a bit big, possibly 10 inch. Not too sure, I'm trying to think about my MacBook in comparison. But anyway, here we have it. To set up Windows XP now, press enter. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through this stuff and see what happens. So this is the XP recovery console, and hopefully through this, we'll be able to recover 
um, the operating system without having to reinstall. Um, what caused this failure is um, uh, an error with Norton Internet Security. It's a very, very common issue with Norton and other antiviruses for them to cause the entire computer to refuse to respond and boot into the uh, operating system, which is unfortunate for many people. But anyway, as you can see here, it gives uh, the list of operating systems. We want number one, which is Windows XP. Enter. Type the administrator password. Okay. Okay, so we don't have the password for this machine. I'll have to get the password uh, tomorrow, but there's no time for me to do this tonight anyway. I just wanted to see if it was working. And yeah, I'm glad that the pen drive has become bootable into XP. It was very easy to do that. And um, yeah, I'm going to get this up and running very soon. So. I'm going to chill out now, go to bed very, very soon. Um, I'll update you when something else exciting happens with this netbook. So an update to this little project then, um, this little netbook repair. Um, it's an XP machine and I'm not going to show you of course, but there's an XP license sticker on the back. Um, so that's great, XP. I've got XP on here. Works great, as you guys saw. I was going to try and repair it. It didn't want to repair. Um, tried various passwords and stuff. It just didn't want to um, start repairing. I don't know why. Um, so, I thought I'm going to have to reinstall XP. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really a fan of installing XP these days because of the amount of updates that it has. Um, my particular version of XP is only Service Pack 1, so it's quite a lot of updates. Um, it is a lot of downloading and of course you've got the drivers on top of that and just the general um, bore that XP is quite sluggish when it comes to updating. I don't know if anyone else finds this but XP is extremely, the, the whole operating system slows down when it's updating, when it's downloading updates. It, you know, it's like it really hogs the resources which is a shame but to put a long story short, installing XP isn't the nicest task. Now installing Windows 7 is a much easier process much, much, much easier, especially um, because of all the automatic driver installations that it has and everything for things like the built-in webcam and all that stuff. Um, the only things that would be slightly dodgy and don't know if I'll get working properly are the media keys that it has, you know, things like th that are on the keyboard, but I mean, I'm sure there's a way I can get them working, you know, the normal like I don't know if there's any on here actually, just like volume up, volume down, I doubt there is. They look like just function keys to me. So what I just said was pointless, but um, everything should work just fine. So I phoned up um, my mum's friend, the lady that belongs to this netbook, and she'll be very happy with Windows 7, uh, which is fantastic. It's easier for me and it's also easier for her in the long run considering she'll get a much newer operating system. Um, and yeah, it's, well, it's just the current gen operating system. So, I've got to rearrange this and um, install, uh, not install, create a bootable image of Windows 7 on this. I'll use the exact same method as I did with XP because that worked really, really well. And we'll get Windows 7 on this guy. So you guys don't really need to see me do this yet again. Um, so yeah, I'll just do this now and then we'll turn this on, boot into the stick and see what happens. Okay, so success and progress is made. We go from this Windows copy that I have to this and it's installing. You don't get much better than that. I mean, that's just fantastic. Um, really cool. Now, this is reminding me what I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm gonna get a large capacity flash drive. Um, 16 gigs will be totally enough and I'm going to partition it and I'm going to have Windows 7 bootable copy, Windows XP bootable copy, Windows Vista bootable copy believe it or not um, just so I can use the repair utility and if someone wants Vista um, I'll have all sorts of disk cleanup things you know um, uh, utilities to allow me to bypass passwords and everything in order to um, help people fix their machines I can carry around because my pen drive is always on my uh, keys in my pocket 
this can continue to be the pen drive that I use for everything, but there's no harm in having another one on here, 16 gigs, just with a load of utilities on it to help me, you know, um, antivirus. I can keep Microsoft Office on there, so if anyone wants Office, I can just give them Office. You know, it's just easier and it'll be really cool. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a while and because it's easier than bringing the machines back here to do things, I can go, you know, if if we visit somebody and they've got a problem, you know, or I can get called out. I'd, I'd really like that because um, the more and more questions I'm getting about computers locally is, you know, it's, it's, it's growing by the day and um, I really need to get my act together and create one place where I have all of my utilities that I use, you know, like Memtest 86 for people's computers, everything like that, um, various things, um, hard drive defragging tools, just all sorts of things like that that you just generally need. So that's a, that's a plan of mine and um, I need to get onto that pretty soon. I've got some spare money hanging around so I'll probably um, buy a 16 gigabyte flash drive very soon. Got some awesome progress here. Setup is starting services. It's restarted and updated the registry. Very nice, very nice, very quick off a pen drive. And you can see it's completing the installation. Very cool. Major success in installing Windows, absolutely no problems at all. And Windows is fully activated as you can see. I'm not gonna scroll down to see my uh, to show you my product key, of course. Well not my product key. But anyway, here it is. It's a nice little system. It's got a gig of RAM, Intel Atom processor, 1.66 gigahertz. It's quite nice, it's not too bad at all for a little netbook. Okay everyone, sorry about the noise, I'm burning a DVD on my Mac Pro. Um, it should stop in a minute, it's nearly done. But I can't remember what my last update was about with this netbook. Um, but I'm just here to tell you that it's completely done and everything's looking great. Um, I've had no troubles with it, it's fantastic, I've got everything up to date. Um, the antivirus is up to date, um, the newest Internet Explorer is installed, um, whatever the version is. Everything's great, all the drivers are done, Graf graphics drivers, sound drivers, webcam driver, everything like that going great. It's a nice little unit. The only thing that I need to do now is um, shut it down, give it a clean up, because that's obviously a very important part. You don't want to give a computer back to somebody that's a little on the dirty side. It is a glossy machine, so uh, it does collect fingerprints, and I guess 90% of them are mine at this point in time. So I do need to clean this up a little. I cleaned the screen earlier, um, but I will uh, give it another once over, just so it's nice when it goes back to the owner. And uh, yeah, this was a successful um, repair. This isn't just a repair, this was also an upgrade for them, so I guess it's a bonus. You're using a newer system and everything's going great. This little machine has a 160 gigabyte hard drive in it, which is quite nice. It's quite a nice spec machine, actually. One gig of RAM, you know, maybe an upgrade to two gigs in the future would be ideal if, if um, they were planning on using this for more than sort of one or two years from now. Um, but anyway, it's going great and um, I'm just gonna keep running it uh, just to make sure that everything's um, functioning correctly. So thanks very much for watching guys and as I get more systems into repair, um, of course I will be sharing them with you.